strange dream in which she saw a white elephant entering into her womb through the right side of her chest and she became pregnant the king and the people looked forward with anticipation to the birth of a royal child according to their custom the queen returned to her parents home for his for the birth and on her way in the beautiful spring sunshine she took the rest in the lumbini garden all about her were ashoka blossoms in delight she reached her right arm out to pluck a branch and as she did so a prince was born all expressed their heartfelt delight with the glory of the queen and her princely child heaven and earth rejoiced this memorable day was the 8th day of april the joy of the king was extreme and he named the child siddhartha which means every wish fulfilled in the palace of the king however delight was followed quickly by sorrow for after several days the lovely queen maya suddenly died her younger sister maha prajapati became the child's foster mother and brought him up with loving care a hermit called asita who lived in the mountains not far away noticed a radiance about the castle interpreting it as a good omen he came down to the palace and was shown the child he predicted this prince if he remains in the palace when grown up will become a great king and subjugate the whole world but if he forsakes the court life to embrace a religious life he will become a buddha the savior of the world at first the king was pleased to hear this prophecy but later he started to worry about the possibility of his only son leaving the palace to become a homeless recluse at the age of 7 the prince began his lessons in the civil and military arts but his thoughts more naturally tended to other things one spring day he went out of the castle with his father together they were watching a farmer at his plowing when he noticed a bird descending to the ground and carried off a small worm which had been turned up by the farmer's plow he sat down in the shade of a tree and thought about it whispering to himself alas do all living creatures kill each other the prince who had lost his mother so soon after his birth was deeply affected by the tragedy of these little creatures this spiritual wound deepened day by day as he grew up little a little scar on a young tree the suffering of human life became more and more deeply ingrained in his mind the king was increasingly worried as he recalled the hermit's prophecy and tried in every possible way to cheer the prince and to turn his thoughts in other directions the king arranged the marriage of the prince at the age of 19 to the princess yashodhara she was the daughter of super buddha the lord of devadaha castle and a brother of the late queen maya For ten years, in the different pavilions of springs, autumn, and the rainy season, the prince was immersed in rounds of music, dancing, and pleasures. But always his thoughts returned to the problem of suffering as he pensively tried to understand the true meaning of human life. The luxuries of the palace, this healthy body, this rejoicing youth, what do they mean to me, he thought. some day he may be sick we shall become aged from death there is no escape pride of youth pride of health pride of existence all thoughtful people should cast them aside 
a man struggling for existence will naturally look for something of value there are two ways of looking a right way and a wrong way if he looks in the wrong way he recognizes that sickness old age and death are unavoidable but he seeks the opposite if he looks in the na- in the right way he recognizes the true nature of sickness old age and death and he searches for meaning in that which transcends all human sufferings in my life of pleasures i seem to be looking in the wrong way thus the spiritual struggle went on in the mind of the prince until his only child rahula was born when he was 29 this seemed to bring things to a climax for he then decided to leave the palace and look for the solution of his spiritual unrest in the homeless life of a mendicant he left the castle one night with only his charioteer chandaka and his favorite horse the snow white kantaka he anguish didn't and and many devils tempted him saying you would do better to return to the castle for the whole world would soon be yours but he told the devil that he did not want the whole world so he shaved his head and turned his steps towards the south carrying a begging bowl in his hand the prince first visited the hermit bhagwa and watched his ascetic practices he then went to arada kalama and udarka ramaputra to learn their methods of attaining enlightenment through meditation but after practicing them for a time he became convinced that they would not lead him to enlightenment finally he went to the land of magadha the methods of his practice were unbelievably rig- rigorous he spurred himself on with the thought that no ascetic in the past none in the present and none in the future ever has practiced or ever will practice more earnestly than i do still the prince couldn't realize his goal after 6 years in the forest he gave up the practice of ascetism he went bathing in the river and accepted a bowl of milk from the hand of sujata a maiden who lived in the neighboring village the five companions who had lived with the prince during the 6 years of his ascetic practices were shocked that he should receive milk from the hand of a maiden then they thought him degraded and left him thus the prince was left alone he was still weak but at the risk of losing his life he attempted yet another period of meditation saying to himself blood may become exhausted flesh may decay bones may fall apart but i will never leave this place until i find the way to enlightenment it was an intense and in- incomparable struggle for him he was desperate and filled with confusing thoughts dark shadows overhung his spirits and he was beleaguered by all the lures of the devils carefully and patiently he examined them one by one and rejected them all it was a hard struggle indeed making his blood run thin his flesh fall away and his bones crack but when the morning star appeared in the eastern sky the struggle was over and the prince's mind was as clear and bright as the breaking day he had at last found the path to enlightenment it was december 8th when the prince became a buddha at 35 years of age from this time on the prince was known by different names some spoke of him as buddha the perfectly enlightened one tathagata some spoke of him as shakyamuni 
the sage of the shankhya clan others called him the world honored one he went first to mrigdeva in varanasi where the five mendicants who had lived with him during the 6 years of his ascetic life were staying at first they shunned him but after they had talked with him they believed in him and became his first followers he then went to the rajgriha castle and won over king bimsara who had always been his friend from there he went about the country living on alms and teaching men to accept his way of life men responded to him as the thirsty seek water and the hungry food two great disciples sariputra and madugal yagna and their 2000 followers came to him at first the buddha's father king shridodana still inwardly suffering because of his son's decision to leave the palace remained aloof but then became his faithful disciple maharaj prajapati the buddha's stepmother and princess yashodra his wife and all the members of the shankya clan began to follow him multitudes of others also became his devoted and faithful followers for 45 years the buddha went about the country preaching and persuading men to follow his way of life but when he was 80 at vaishali and on his way from rajgriha to saraswati he became ill and predicted that after 3 months he would enter nirvana still he journeyed on until he reached pava where he fell seriously ill from some food offered by chunda a blacksmith eventually in spite of great pain and weakness he reached the forest forest that bordered kushi nagra lying between two large sala trees he continued teaching his disciples until his last moment thus he entered into perfect tranquility after he had completed his work as the world's greatest teacher under the guidance of ananda the buddha's favorite disciple the body was cremated by his friends in kushi 